welcome back to another Java tutorial video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at classes. We're going to see how to create classes and how to create methods and instance variables in those classes and then use them in the main method to replace some functions that we usually do in main to reduce the amount of code that we have in main. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is a class? A class is a Java file that contains methods and variables that is used by either other classes or by the main method. Classes can be used to store information, perform functions, etc, etc. A class usually is used separately from the main method and does not contain a main method. Classes are called from the main method and are instantiated, giving accessibility to the methods found in the class. One example of a class that we've been using all along is the scanner class. We instantiated the scanner class and we used a bunch of methods that the scanner class had, such as the next int, next double, or has next variables. Here are a few benefits of using classes. Using classes can reduce the amount of code in the main method, or by reducing the amount of static methods that are in the main method class. Classes can perform functions through a single method rather than through multiple lines of code in main. And you can have multiple classes for different objects and use them both in the same main method. For example, if you have a bank account class and you have a, and you have a savings and then a checking account class. A few reasons to use classes is because it can allow data hiding, meaning that certain aspects of the class are hidden from the person using the main method, preventing alteration of the class and disrupting its function. Instance variables in a class are made private, so they cannot be altered except through the methods provided in the class. This is kind of a safety feature to prevent people from altering any methods or altering any variables and altering the entire functionality of the class itself. A few specifics for a class. When writing a class, it's important to create a constructor to initialize all the instance variables of the class. If not, a default constructor is created and all the values are set to default values. Numbers are set to zero, booleans are set to false, and strings and chars set to null. You can create multiple constructors to initialize different parts or all parts of the class. But in main, you must only use one for the same class. Doing this is called method overloading. Here's a little bit more about method overloading. A method overload is when you have the same method name, but you create them more than once. So you have two or more of the same method name. The difference between all these methods is that they have different parameters. Most commonly, this is seen in the constructor, but you could also do it in any other method. In the method, if you have one that has two variables in the parameter, but another one with three in the parameter, they are known to be overloaded. You can use either or by passing the different number of methods and having a different number of methods is called the method signature. And that's what distinguishes one method from another. Now that we've learned a bit more about classes, let's take a look at a few examples in Java. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a class. And here we're inside the main method called roster. And we have a class over here called student. Let's take a quick look at the student class and take a look at what's inside. We have a string name, string gender, int age, string major, int grad year, and double GPA. We have some basic college student information. Now let's take a look at these two constructors. As you can see, we have two constructors, meaning that these constructors are being overloaded. In this first constructor, we have it instantiating only the student's personal info. So it's taking in the name, the gender, and the age, and it's instantiating only the first three variables. Here in the second constructor, we're having it instantiate both the student information and the college information. So we're getting in the name, the gender, the age, but we're also getting the major, the grad year, and then the GPA. So we're instantiating both parts. Taking a look downward, we have three methods down here. One that's called get personal info, which only returns the name, gender, and age. We have get college info, which returns the major, grad year, and GPA. And then we have get all info, which is actually calling the personal info and the get college info methods. So that way it's calling get personal info, which will return name, gender, and age. And then a new line, get college info, which is major, grad year, and GPA. And then we have down here all the accessor and mutator methods, get name, set name, get gender, set gender, age, major, grad, year, and GPA. And let's go back to our roster class and see what's going on here. So to instantiate a class, 
it's just like what we've been doing with the scanner class. Student, or the name of the class, then the variable name, in this case I'm calling it S1, gets the value of new student, the class name again, and then we're going to supply the three parameters required for the first constructor. The name, the gender, and then the age. Let's also instantiate two more classes, student S2, new student, and then this time we're going to use the other constructor that takes in six parameters. The name, the gender, the age, but also takes in the major, the graduation year, and then the GPA. And let's do that one once more, student S3, new student, name, gender, age, major, graduation year, and then GPA. And now let's print out all the students' full information. We're going to do a system out print, display the student's information, and we're going to call the get all info method, which means that it's calling this method here, and it's going to call these two methods inside itself. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So as you'll see, we have Caesar, male, 22, just like we have here, but it says null, 0, and 0, 0.0. And that's because we used the first constructor, which in the first constructor only takes in three parts, and it only instantiates three parts. Whereas down here, Alex, male, 21, and it says IT 2016 and 3.45, we used this constructor, which takes in six parameters and instantiates the other three. The same happened with the last person, Steph, female, 20, and then the major CS, graduation year 2017, and then GPA 3.7. Now, let's do a bit of a change. Let us add the first student's college information. So let's go back to S1 and modify it so that way we have the major, the grad year, and the GPA. So you would type in S1, let me actually do this for you again, S1, then period, and you would do set, and whatever it is the method you want. In this case, we're going to be using set major, and we're going to be required to put in a string, which in this case is the major itself. Set major, IT, same thing happens with the grad year, 2015, and the same thing happens with the GPA, 3.15. Now, let us uncomment this and alter one piece of the other two college student informations. And let's look at this one, and it says to alter one piece of the other two students' college info. So student S2, we're going to set the grad year to 2017, and then student S3, we're going to set the GPA to 3.55, which is different because S2 here is 2016, and in S3, the GPA is 3.70. And then finally, we're going to print this out all once more. Print line, display the student's name, get all info. It's basically the same exact method, the same exact printout that we did up here. So we're going to be printing it out after all of these changes. Let's run it and see what happens. And we'll see that it says Caesar male 22. And this time, instead of saying null 0 and 0, 0.0, it says IT 2015 and 3.15. Alex, instead of saying 2016 up here, it now says 2017. And with Steph, instead of saying 3.7, it says 3.55. So this is what it's like to use classes. We've already been doing these classes, though, with the scanner class. But this time, you can actually create a class of your own, and you can have variables that you would need. You could have constructors to instantiate those variables, and you can have specific methods to do certain functions with those variables. This concludes today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.